Hey, hey everybody, it's your good buddy Sick50 Eve here. Welcome to another episode of the New Bike Build Series. This is where we're taking the 2018 BMW S1000 RR that I purchased from my good friends here at Sills BMW. We're going to add some amazing custom parts to it. And then at the end of the build series, we make it available for those viewing this video. In today's episode, our good friend Zach is going to install the Bren Tuning Supplied Racing Cams into the engine. And we're gonna get that going, so uh, let's take a look. How's it going, everybody? So today, we're gonna actually get the new valve springs and high-performance camshafts installed into the engine and uh, get it timed correctly, put the valve cover back on so we're ready to put the engine back into the motorcycle. Okay. Uh, figured to start off, we could go over some tools that would be necessary to do this job. Um, just that way, I won't explain it as I go along. We'll just kind of explain it now and show a couple tips for anyone that may want to attempt something like this themselves. So let's start with uh, the tooling that you'd need. You'd need a valve timing kit or camshaft timing kit from BMW. Uh, you can see it has a part number right there. Special tool from them. This is what's used to tension the camshaft properly, lock the crankshaft in the top dead center, and then actually this sets the timing of the camshafts. We're going to go through and double check the stock timing first. I mean, we know obviously it was correct because the bike ran, but we'll just show how to check that first and then we'll show setting it. Okay. Um, another thing, since we are changing valve springs, we need what's called a cylinder leak down tester. And this is going to allow us to fill up the cylinder with air so that we can get the valve springs off and the valve will not fall into the cylinder. Okay. So as long as that happens, we don't have to remove the cylinder. If okay. we lose a valve, then we'll wind up having to take it apart. So we're gonna try our best to not have that occur. Um, another thing you would need is feeler gauges because we're gonna have to set the distance between the camshaft and the valve springs using shims. You need uh, different size shims for the supplied uh, valve spring keepers. These are this is just a hot cam set, uh, 9.48 millimeters. You can see they fit in there. The BMW ones are actually a little bit smaller, I believe. Okay. Um, so this, this is what's used to adjust the clearance, so you need them. So another tool you'll need is a feeler gauge. I brought a couple different types out. Um, these ones are great for little tappet type adjust where you don't use shims. You can fit, in, fit them in there very accurately, get a nice accurate reading. Um, besides different shapes, you can see these ones have an angle to them. Yep. There's also different units of measurement. Uh, these ones and these ones are both in uh, English or thousandths of an inch okay. increments. And these ones right here are metric in hundredths of a millimeter in increments. So you need to make sure you know what unit of measurement you're working with so that you always get the correct measurement. Um, the thing that's tricky with the feeler gauge is when you use it, you're pushing it between two objects. So it needs a certain amount of drag. So a good way to get a feel for that is to take a micrometer and you can set it to a feeler gauge measurement like six thousandths of an inch mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to insert your feeler gauge in the gap that's created in the micrometer, if I can get it in there, and then you can feel what the correct amount of drag is. This particular feeler gauge I like to use a lot, it's called the go no go gauge. The front half here that's a different color you can see yep. is six thousandths and then the back part's eight so you can see I can't push it farther than that. Yeah. So if I were setting a valve clearance at six thousandths, this would be perfect. Here, if you want, I'll actually have you feel it so you can see what the correct drag feels like. Yeah. Oh, now you did it. <laughs> no, I'll never get it back yeah, in there. Yeah, now you get it back uh -huh. in there. But I did feel it, Zach. Yeah. Did you see how it had just a little bit yes. of drag on it, but it wasn't stuck by any means? Yes. <laughs> Don't let me ha handle tools. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> trying to show an example. Oh, yeah. All right, so we'll be done with that for now, too. Uh, the micrometer could also be used to double check the measurements of shims okay. that we showed before to adjust it, just to make sure that they're accurate. You can also use a caliper, which is what I'll use just because it's digital and easier. This is extremely technical, man. It is. It's very, and this is actually an easier way to do it because it uses the stock timing tools. Yeah. Um, besides that, after you change the springs and get the cams in and get the valve clearance to set, then you would have to actually degree the cams if they didn't use stock timing, which means you get the piston set to a certain level in the cylinder, and then you need to see how far the intake or exhaust valve opens wow. to set your timing. Um, so that takes that step out of it at least, which is a lot better. I think a question that a lot of the viewers would like to know, Zach, is 
if they wanted to get uh, cams installed onto their S1000, um, how much labor would that cost? How many hours? Um, it probably bill out right around 10 hours. 10 hours? And we're $85 an hour here. Wow. Any, any shop that tells you about 10 hours, would that be accurate? Somewhere okay. Somewhere between eight and 12, I'd say it'd be the estimate. If it's, someone, if it's a place that's done it a lot, um, they might be able to charge it a little less because they'll get it done quicker. Okay. But here we charge 10, I'd say. Okay. Yeah, I saw that question pop up a bunch. Well, let's go ahead and get going. We'll set this engine to number one top dead center and we'll check it with the timing tool just so we know all that works and then we'll get the camshafts out. Sweet. Timing cover off so we can turn the crankshaft. 16 millimeter, not 17. Okay. And then we're gonna turn the engine in the direction of rotation. I see that stuff's moving up there. Yep. What we're going to watch for is the intake valves on number one uh, getting depressed. Remember I said it would suck in? Yeah. Wow. All right, so they're getting, it's going through the intake stroke right now. So after that comes our compression stroke. So then we're going to want to watch with the flashlight in there. probably have to show you once I get it set because there's not a lot of room. If you look in there there's two dots that are now aligned. Yep. Which means that cylinder number one is at top dead center. So the pistons up all the way, all four of the valves are closed and that's how most engines are timed. Um, BMW goes one step further then besides uh, most of the Japanese bikes will just have you line up those dots and then line up a line across the top here. You can see this line. Mm -hmm. um, BMW goes one step further. They have a tool that locks our crankshaft into that top dead center position. So we just have to remove this plug here. And then we go to that tool kit that we showed at the beginning. And this is the tool that's gonna lock us into top dead center. Now when it screws in all the way, without any resistance, and we did pretty good. It's in all the way, mm -hmm. and then... I shouldn't be able to, I can't turn the crankshaft now. Nice. It's locked in position. So it's locked in that position, so it can't move out of it, which is a nice thing. Um, the other tool that I showed was this, I call it the eyeglasses. It actually goes over on this side, and it should slide right onto the camshaft. See how it slid right on? Yes. There's two flats. These flats all align. It's zero degrees. So our cam chain isn't stretched. We're, our timing is set perfectly from the factory, of course. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to show that. This is how we're going to reset it once we remove the camshafts. Okay. It's very important, because if you get this wrong, a valve will wind up hitting the piston, and that causes expensive and extensive engine damage. No wow. That. So that's... Uh, one step that we have to do when replacing camshafts. The other thing is, that I was talking about is the valve clearance with the feeler gauges. Um, from the factory, the BMW specs are 14 hundredths to 20 hundredths of a millimeter on the intake side. So this is our intake side because these are throttle bodies. So this is our intake camshaft. This is our exhaust camshaft. So on our intake camshaft, we need to be able to fit a .14 feeler gauge between here I can actually do it from this side so just, yeah. between the camshaft and the little finger follower. So this fits in but it's really easy. Mm -hmm. There's no resistance. Remember that drag? Yes. That's where that drag feeling comes into play. Um, so we'll move up to, we'll jump to, we'll go to .16. Still has a lot. We'll go to .18. Starting to get a little more drag. I think we're going to be right at that point two. Oh, point two won't fit in there because you don't want to force it in either. Yeah. Yeah. So point two doesn't fit. So that puts us. They don't have to give you every single feeler gauge because it doesn't really matter if it's point one nine. 
this probably would measure a 0.19, but I'm in the spec range between 0.14 and 0.20. That's all that matters. Yeah. So we would call this a 0.18, which is perfect. Okay. They do want us to remove the camshafts with it locked at top dead center cylinder number one. Okay. So next we're going to remove the cam chain tensioner. This is what keeps this chain tight, but not too tight and keeps it from jumping teeth and then moving camshafts, which would be bad and cause that failure we talked about before where a valve could hit a piston. This particular cam chain tensioner is uh, oil pressure is what makes it work, but it has spring for backup and for starting. Okay. So you can see it's a little bit springy, but once the engine starts and see the oil that's coming out of it? Yeah. When the engine starts and oil pressure is built up, it holds this solid so that the chain doesn't sit around and clatter because now our chain's a lot looser. And then it has us take this top guide rail off. There's a sequence that we have to remove the bolts in that hold the camshaft in. So this is the sequence I want you to start here mm -hmm. and then go next to it. So we do one, two, three, four, five. You just follow the sequence along. Oh, wow. And we're just going to go like a quarter turn at a time. That way this cap doesn't break because this is all under a lot of pressure. It's all under spring pressure, so we can't break this cap. If we break this cap, you have to buy a whole new cylinder head because this cap is machined along with the cylinder head. Yeah. And you don't want to put odd pressure on the, cur the camshaft because they could break too. So we're just going to go ahead and follow the order. Like I said, you just kind of go about a quarter turn at a time. Okay. And how much is the cylinder head if you were to damage it? Probably $5,000. Whoa! Final bolts loosened up, and now we can remove the second cam shaft holder. Uh huh. Already got the first one off. Yep, there it is. You can see they look different, so you, you don't have to worry about mixing them up. Mm -hmm. The center bolts do have copper washers. Um, they should be replaced if it was a higher mileage engine since it's brand new. These are going to be fine to reuse. Okay. That generally just means that oil pressure is in a passageway around here somewhere. Okay. Um, so now that we have this out, um, let me guess what's next. You got to do something to get this chain off there. Yeah, but we don't have to do much actually. <laughs> we just roll the camshaft. Oh. And then our camshaft. <laughs> okay. So that part's not that bad. No. Um, you can put a little screwdriver or something in here to hold the chain. It's not that big a deal. As long as you have a magnet, you can fish it back out. Okay. So now we have our stock camshafts out. And... These are going to be our new racing cams. I don't know if there's much of a visual difference. Let's see. This is the intake, and this is the intake here. Put it in the same direction. So what you're looking at on camshafts, as we explained before, is how the lift of the lobe and how long the valve is open, which is the flat. You can see this is the flat's a little bit longer. This has more of an arch to it, mm -hmm. so it's going to hold that valve open. Um, the reason this lobe looks a little bit longer, I think, is because the center line of this is actually moved. Okay. So you'd have to put, we'd have to put a dial indicator on the valve to see the actual travel gain that the valve gets with the camshaft. Okay. Okay. So now we got all the little finger followers. We'll just lift them up out of the way. And we're going to put a rag in over here. This is the same procedure right now. It would be to this point if you needed your valves adjusted. This is what's involved. Okay. Uh, the check would have been the first thing we did, and then this is what it takes to do an adjustment. You'd find whichever one was out of adjustment. You grab a magnet. Remove that shim, measure the shim, recalculate what size the new shim would need to be, put that in, and then put the camshafts back in, retime it, and then your valves would be adjusted. So that's what's involved in a valve adjustment. That's why uh -huh. that's an expensive procedure. Sure. Uh, like at the beginning, I said we're not using the BMW shim, so I'm just going to put these in a pile off to the side. We're going to be using a different size shim. Right now, 
now we'll just pull all of these out. So now we're going to use our leak down tester to fill the cylinder up with air so that we can change one of these valve springs. I need an adapter to get down to the spark plug thread size. You want to make sure your adapter is going to stay tight on your hose so you don't lose it down there. Just thread it in just like the spark plug. Seat it, not too tight. Okay. And then this part of the tool hooks up the shop air. This so, tool is actually used when in diagnosing engines that aren't running correctly. Okay. It'll tell us if you have a leak past an intake valve, intake valve or an exhaust valve, or if it's leaking past the piston rings. So we're just gonna set it to, since we're not worried about doing an actual test, set it to like 30 PSI. And then we plug it in. And you can see our engine's in great shape, which it should be. There's no leak down. That's where I had the needle. Okay. And that's what you want. You want little to no leak down. But we're just using it for the air. Now we're going to take our valve spring tool. This is a cool tool. Because usually, uh, actually I should show what the other style of valve spring compressor looks like. Okay. This is usually what we would use to compress the valve springs because the cylinder head would be off, this part would sit on the valve, and then we'd screw it down and it would compress the spring and we could get the keepers out. Well, obviously with the cylinder head on, we can't do that. Right. We don't want to have to replace all these bolts. We don't want to have to replace the head gasket. No. So they make a uh, couple different variations of tools that are made to get valves out with the leak down tester in place. Uh, this particular one I've never used. So oh, we're gonna okay. see uh, how well mm. this goes. You can either use a hammer or if I got enough strength, I can just push down on the valve spring here. which you can see is just opening the valve. So we're going to have to add a little more air pressure. Let's try it up at 40. Let's see if that's enough to hold the valve. Yep, I think it is. And then it removed the two valve keepers for me and I am able to remove the valve spring. Unbelievable. <laughs> Isn't that something cool, guys? That worked awesome. It actually worked better than I tried it on the bench before, and it didn't work that well. So now we get we got to get our keepers back out. This is what keeps the valve spring from flying into the air. Yeah. Um, we're gonna get our new valve spring from Brent Tuning. Where did you find the tool, Zach? Uh, this is a Blue Point tool, mm. part number GA three one seven. Okay. Uh, Motion Pro used to make one, and I had it, and it broke, and they quit making it. So. I never tried this exact tool, but it works really well, as you can see. Yeah. Let's see how well it works for install. So now we're going to use... Well, his gearhead friends are definitely impressed. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Yeah. That works really well. So we're going to grab this, this, we'll reuse this inner spring. No, we won't reuse the inner spring. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, they didn't tell me that part. So we'll put this back in here, center it as best possible, and then we're going to place our keepers. These are what I was also worried about with the engine in the frame flying all over the place. Sure. And this is why you want to make sure you have a rag over here. We don't want to drop that. So we'll set them like that. And then this part of the tool has a little piece that's going to center them. Yep. And hopefully reinstall. We just got to push down nice and square. Or use a hammer. Yep, we got it. You got it with no hammer? I got it with no hammer. Sweet. You can see they're seated in there nicely. Um, I might. I'm probably going to actually drop this air pressure a little bit. We'll go back down to like 20. Perform another test? Yeah. And we'll just uh, give it a little tap with a hammer to make sure everything's seated. And the way that you do that is you hold one hammer on the top of the valve and then we'll hit this hammer with this. Just to open that valve a little bit because if these weren't seated it would have gone flying and we know it's not seated. So now we know that's not seated, that's a good thing. We're ready to move on and change the rest of the valve spring. Wow. Valve. And then we just got to find uh, the correct size shims that we need. Just be ready to close that valve.
All right. That's all of them. Give them all a good visual inspection. They all look good. They're at the exact same height. Okay. I like it. Definitely an important step you would want. You don't want any of that coming apart mm -hmm. on you ever. Our valve spring tool worked great. So now we have to install shims to get the correct gap between the camshaft and our actual valve. Okay. So Bennett Bren Tuning was nice enough to give me a range of shims that he said I could start with. Mm -hmm. That way we'll have a gap and then we can, um, using math, we can figure out what the correct gap is and put the right shim in there. So we have to do it twice. So I think that kind of stinks. And his other uh, suggestion was that these cams, as you can see, are covered in this gray molly coat. He suggested we take that off so that it doesn't uh, flake off into the oil and clog any oil passages or anything. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead right now and remove this molly coat and install our three to like 2.95 to three millimeter valve shims in each of the buckets. I think this, if it, yeah, looks like it just comes off with some carb cleaner. Oh, cool. If it's really molly, I should be stained for the rest of the day now. We got the molly coat off the camshafts. They're cleaned up. We're going to get the sprockets installed on them just loosely. Um, they only fit. It only fits one way. It's going to go in the slotted hole, mm -hmm. which that would be your adjustment of cam timing. So we're just going to put these in here loosely. I put the valve shims in. Started right in the 2.85 to... 3.05 range, which is hopefully going to let us fit a feeler gauge in underneath there. And then we can figure out the exact size shim we need. And we can tell which camshaft is which because the exhaust camshaft has a pickup for the sensor on it. So we know this one's the exhaust camshaft. Okay. Uh, if you remember before, we were turning our engine over to move the piston, so we need to get that back to cylinder number one, top dead center. So I'm going to set that back up and reinstall the lock pin and then we'll uh, get the camshafts in. So uh, now that we got some valve shims selected and installed, we can go ahead and install the cams. I, I got the pin back in to lock the engine at cylinder number one, top dead center. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we put the gears on the camshaft and as you can see, there's three bolts. So to start our initial timing, we're going to spin it so that the two bolts are on top and this line winds up parallel with the line on the valve cover. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the intake camshaft. A little trickier, cause you kinda gotta roll it into position. That looks pretty good. It's probably about where we wanna start at. Now I believe we're gonna take our tensioner tool. Just install it hand tight. And put the first cam cap back in position. So there's O-rings. I want to point this out. There's O-rings that go in all these holes. They stuck to the cam caps, but you want to make sure that they're all there. Okay. You'd have oil leaking into your spark plug galleys otherwise. So we're just going to seat that like that. Double check the O-rings on this guy. They're all there. Yep. These are going to be coming back off anyway, so it's not that important at this stage. Okay. We'll start at 20. Okay. And go back to one, because that's usually how that would work. I think that might be a misprint in the service info. Okay. Again, you're just gonna start by hand, over in the corner, and get all these guys going. So it has us torque all the cam cap bolts to five newton meters first in the sequence shown, and then I'll go to 15 newton meters. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay. Oh, lost my sequence up here. Can't see that far. Next, we have to set our ignition timing so we can check our valve clearances. To do that, we hand tightened in our fake cam chain tensioner okay. that comes with the tool kit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we set the tension, turning this inner screw to 1.2 newton meters. 
So not very tight, but that's gonna apply tension to this chain, see it getting tighter. Yep. So that's set. And then we're gonna pull our TDC tool. I'm just gonna turn the engine over. Broken free. Now we're gonna make our way all the way back to cylinder number one, top dead center. We're gonna turn slowly too, just to make sure if there's any resistance felt, you can stop and hopefully not do any damage. Okay. But everything feels pretty good. Should be coming off. Right now, there goes the intake valves. So I'm gonna start looking for that dot again. About 180 degrees. 90. Our dots are lined up again, and I can see that the hole is lined up to lock our tool in. You can see both our bolts are up top. They're off a little bit from how they were before, but that's all right. Okay. The last from the special tool container, that this is going to turn the camshafts for us. We're going to use this in conjunction with this tool on the zero side. Gonna turn these until they until the tool slid in. Did you see the tool yep. slide in there? Yep. Do the same thing on this camshaft. Alright, so that tool slid in. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque down those gears. We have our camshafts time to our crankshaft. We can go ahead and start to check our clearances. I printed off a sheet. Uh, you could probably make something like this yourself if you were doing it, or you could stop by your dealer. Maybe they'd print this out for you. Just gives you what cylinder, what your valve spec is going to be, and then you can write down what your measurement is, and then uh, it'll help you figure out real, real quickly what size shim you need. Okay. So since we're set number one, top dead center, we can check all four valves on that. And Bren Tuning has us setting the clearances at 0.18 to 0.22, a little bit larger and what the factory specs are. So we're gonna just start measuring and see what we got. We can fit a .18 in there. Can't fit a 3.2, but the three fits. So we're gonna call that 300, hundredths, 30 hundredths of a millimeter of clearance. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. Oh, we're actually doing exhaust. So our clearance was .28 to .32. So we're good on that valve. Okay. That valve we can leave alone. Let's see if we're as lucky on the one next to it. 0 0.30 fits, 2, 0.34. Looks like this one's going to be a little bit on the large side, so we're actually going to have to get a bigger shim. But we need what the exact measurement is to figure out what that size shim may be. Can't fit a. Can we fit that? Yeah, we got a point 0.4. Looks like a .44 fits in there, so we'll record that, but that puts us over the limit by 12 hundredths of a millimeter, so we need a 12 hundredths millimeter bigger shim in that valve. Okay. So we're going to have to go back and take it apart one more time, but that's all right. We need, as long as you can fit a feeler gauge in there, we can figure it out. Yeah. If it were too tight, we wouldn't have a measurement to go off of, and we wouldn't be able to figure it out. Sure. So you have to do that for all the other ones? Yes, we're going to do that for all the valves. So. We're just going to go through and record what our measurements are this time and then hopefully get them correct the next time and it'll be good to go back together. So we got the valve clearances checked for cylinder number one. Now we're going to turn the engine over by half a turn. Right about there. And that should set us up to check cylinder number three, which is this one here, this set of valves here, and you can see the lobes are facing up, so we're good to check the valve clearances there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to check that distance and record it. And then we'll move on to cylinder number 
four is after that, and then cylinder number two. Okay. So we got all our valve clearances recorded. Most of them are wrong, which is what we expected, but it's fine, we were able to check them. So I'm just gonna show one example of how this is done. If you remember, the valve we showed you was had a 4,400 seven millimeter clearance, which is 1,200, 1,200 seven millimeter out of spec. Mm -hmm. We're actually gonna shoot for 0 0.30 as what we want for the valve clearance, so that's gonna give us a 1,400 seven millimeter difference. So we need to pull the shim back out, and then it's labeled that it's a 305 shim. We're just gonna double check that. Sure enough, yeah, it's a 305 shim, so that's good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to double check what the one next to it was. It was a 290. Yeah, I think this one was actually correct. That was my bad. This one was the one. This one's a 290, so it made our gap too big. Because we're, we're probably going to wind up right around that 3 range. It's a 290, so that's accurate. That's good. So we need to go up 1,400 of a millimeter, so... 290 plus 0.14 would be 3.04 or mm -hmm. 3.05, just like that other shim that was in there. Um, of course, I don't have any more of them. Let's see if there's one in here. Because all these, pretty much all of these were wrong, so they're probably all small. Yep. 310 wasn't bad. We'll go with the 310 that'll put us it'll be a little bit on the tighter side of the clearance I like to shoot for the loose side but it should still put us within clearance okay because that'll be 500 off that. yeah we'll be like right at 0 0.29 0 0.30 okay which is fine because we're allowed to be between 0 0.28 and 0 0.32 gotcha so that is the sh process of shimming the valve so it looks like I'm probably gonna have to order some more three millimeter shims unfortunately okay because they're all gonna need to be Right at that three three oh five range, and I just didn't have enough because you only it only comes with so many of each size shim. Sure. So we'll get some of those ordered up, and then we'll uh, reinstall the camshafts, time them the final time, triple check the valve clearances, and then back in the frame it goes. Nice. All right. Well. All right. That'll wrap it up. I'm sure, for this there'll be tons of questions. <laughs> we'll try to answer whatever we can. Okay. But uh, hopefully you got at least an idea of what goes into it. You can see why it costs so much. To oh sure. Have this process on your motorcycle. Oh, heck yeah. All right. All right, Zach. Well, thank you, man. Cool. Have a good day. All right. Later, guys. So, Zach's going to get that engine reinstalled back into your 2018 S1000RR once those cams are finished up, and then we're going to get the motorcycle tuned so that it can produce optimal horsepower. You still have a chance to support the new Bike Build Series. Information on how to do that is in the description. Thank you guys so much for viewing. We will catch you next time from Silver BMW and the new bike build series.